Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got something special for you, so stay tuned for this one. First things first, let's just say, I've been hitting at some new additions to the farm. Might have already shown it, maybe, maybe not. If you guys were paying attention to some previous videos, could have been seen, but with that said, these are our Hondas. We have a Honda Rancher, 350, and a Honda Recon, a 250. These two four-wheelers have been on this farm for a number of years. They've been well used, they keep running. Hondas don't die. These four-wheelers have done a lot for our farm. We have never ran anything other than just ATVs, four-wheelers. We started with big red three-wheelers. Those were dangerous. That's what I learned to drive on. We had fat cat Hondas. We had all kinds of stuff. Always wanted to change things up and go to something a little bit more farm friendly, a little bit more comfort, a little bit safer than these. So that day has finally come. I was actually in the process of looking for my options out there. And what should we bring to the farm to change this up and make it more of a enjoyable and yet uh, efficient experience here working with small vehicles like this. And right around that time, someone contacted me and said, hey, we see you have a problem. We'd like to fix that problem. You guys wanna see what we did? Let's check it out. Just wait. Oh yeah. Absolutely not. Close the door. They think they're so funny. It'll be it this time, I promise. I promise. Okay. Huh? All right, what do you think? Can-Am said, you guys need something different on your farm. We'd love to work with you guys and uh, bring you one of our toys because we promise it'll beat what you got and you'll really like it. And I said, I would love that. That'd be awesome. I'd love to try it a side by side. We've never had side by side on our farm or UTV as they call it. Thing about this one, which is really cool, is which had me excited was this has got a six foot bed on it. Six foot dump bed. It's kind of the only thing in its class. And especially on a ranch with animals and hay and whatnot, this would be an awesome feature to have. This is called the Defender Pro. It's basically the stretched version of a regular one with a nice long bed on it. But here's the thing, I asked them and I said, I love it, you know, it's great. I'm not gonna complain one bit at all. It would be nice though to have something that could haul three people around comfortably because there's three of us on the farm, especially during harvest or seasons when we need to throw another guy in, we're not jamming someone in the middle or in the back, which is not safe and probably not recommended. They said, oh. Okay, we'll fix that. Gotta do the door opening scene every time. This is a surprise. I did say two, right? I think dad's more excited about this one than we are. Daddy Bill. Well, there you have it. Back to see these things a lot. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna have a lot of uses for them. I'm really excited to see how they fit on the farm. A lot of farms I know have side-by-sides. We're kind of late to the game in the scene, but better late than never. So let's do it. Let's have fun. I think I got some ideas already what we need to use it for. Let's go. So the guys have been talking and they decided this year we're gonna get an old machine running on the farm that we used to use quite a bit that he spent a lot of time on over the years. We've got two Minneapolis Marines on this farm and one of them will run. It's got some issues but we're gonna try to get them working because we might need that tractor to run a pto on a fertilizer auger so let's go get it but first thing got to get me a rope nice yanking rope here and second thing got to find something efficient and effective to pull it with let's go which one i'm thinking this one let's take that one
So we've got here is an old Minneapolis Moline U Special. This has been on the farm for my entire life and probably most of my dad's life. He grew up rock picking on this thing. It's put a lot of hours in, a lot of hard hours. It's had the engine rebuilt, but it still runs really good. We need another track with a PTO on it because we got an auger that needs to run to load fertilizer into the trucks. Leg arms decided, you know what? Why not? Let's just get this thing going. So the problem we have with this tractor is the fuel tank is rusted through and it's leaking gas everywhere. Otherwise, it'll run. But there are some things that we wanna do while it's in here. So we're gonna try to rebuild the fuel tank. Got these parts over here ordered and I'll explain this. I would let leg arms do it, but he doesn't want to. I don't know, a little bashful about his welds here. But yeah. he's right there. This right here is leg arms makeshift exhaust and intake manifolds. So he did them in 2007, he made this. These are made out of trampoline elbows pipes that hold the trampoline together. He did this because the original manifold was rusted through, was not running, it was icing up the carburetor. It was a mess. And at the time, he just did something quick because we needed a deck more. This thing mowed our grass around our farm. So he rigged this up and it honestly worked pretty good for a while. It did uh, sound pretty cool. The problem was we had some low hanging trees and it clipped the exhaust and bent that over. Bottom line is this thing needs some work, but we can get it to the point where it'll run and it'll do the work that we need to do this year. And then down the road, uh, we will like to restore this thing because you can still get a decent amount of parts for these, it seems. So it's a good tractor, just needs a little bit of TLC, but that's okay, we'll get there. So I'm gonna start uh, peeling off some of this stuff, get that tank off there, and then we can figure out what we need to do to try to plate it and patch it. And then I might even peel off some of these other panels and stuff and pop some dents out. Just do a couple odds and ends here. We'll drop the oil on it, clean the rotor up in the cap. Other than that, should be good to go. Nice little mouse nest in here. Yummy. Something's in here. <laughs> um, I believe this is how you check how much gas you have in your tank. <laughs> it's in pretty good shape for sitting in gasoline for so long. It's petrified wood almost. Um, that? Probably, no? Oh yeah. Don't yeah. Get it in. I just got it out. <laughs> I was worried if maybe like we put some in there for your kids, but. No, that was clearly someone checking the gas level and left it in there. That could plug the fuel filter up a little bit. The so leg arms been working on this thing and he thinks, well, they, back in the day, they used to use lead for like body work and other things. And this has actually got a lead bead around here to hold the uh, fuel spout on. And it might look like it's cracked, but I don't know for sure. The one way to find out is we pressurize the tank with a little bit of air, and then we take soapy water and check all the seams, or we can do a Nix method, put gas in it, and let it seep out. But if you have to weld on it, yeah, you don't want gas then you got it. the fumes and you got to take that out. So. This has been dry for a while, which is good. So. so we'll probably end up getting the fitting, pressurize it just a little bit, take soapy water and check everything. But it seems to be fairly solid. If it's intact, that's good. We can put it back on and use it, but that's okay. We need to do some other things to the track in your ways. And these tanks are like, literally like a two minute job to get the tank off. Simple, track for fruit. Very simple back then. Okay, well, we got a bucket of soapy water. It's got the cap on the end. We're not gonna blow it up, but we're just gonna Put a little bit of pressure in there. So I'll just take a little bit of this uh, rag here with some soapy, sudy water, and we'll just smear it around in the spots and then just see if any bubbles appear. And if bubbles appear, we found a leak. If bubbles don't appear, then chances are it was just the fitting that was leaking, which is good. Well, maybe it was just that fitting. Must have been the line coming off. Yeah. Awesome. Well, no, it's it's bubbling right around. Is he bubbling? It's really tiny bubbles, I thought. Yeah, it's. I'll take this off and... Here's one just barely appearing right here. It's very slow. Looks like it just needs threads cleaned up and uh, Teflon tape put on and put back on. But yeah, that's, I can see it bulging out. Cool. Well, that's easy. That saves a few bucks. Found the culprit, split the line. So that's easy. You can either make a new line or just braze over that. I'll make a new one. Yeah. It's better just use a new. Just fuel lines, all it is. Cool. Well, I'm gonna drop the oil on this thing, take the air cleaner. Oh, yeah, air cleaner. It's an oil bath. That guy right there. Change the oil on that too, clean that up. Just kind of just start going through odds and ends and uh, 
tidy her up. We'll probably wash the inside of the fuel tank out with a pressure washer, dry it, and then uh, brush it up real good. Might throw some primer on it while we got it off. The thing is, at some point when we do restore this old tractor, we'll have everything off and paint everything individually and then assemble it carefully so it looks mint. But we're not there yet. But while we got that off, we might as well clean up the rough spots on it so they don't get worse. Oh, that's what we're doing. We're pounding the gasket back in the groove. See, we like Dad to work in a hazardous environment, so we put him at heights, and yes. uh, we like to keep him just head's distance from uh, decapitation. Yeah. Well, one thing about it, it saves on air cuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I suppose I could stop that thing. Yeah. I, you kind of have a little spice in life. <laughs> He's been up here putting new uh, struts on the doors. They got struts that'll open them up as well as uh, fixing the rubber seals on the doors because these tanks are pressurized. Not with a lot of pressure, but just enough. And if it leaks out of those, those lids, it'll actually change the rate that you're applicating your seed or fertilizer. So I got something in my eye when I touch that fan. It'll rinse out. Light arms went ahead and pulled out the spark plug. It is really bad as you can see. Terrible. Wire's bad too. So I'm gonna head to the local auto parts store I'm gonna see what they have for spark plugs and for wires, see if I can get some stuff coming for this, as well as some gas tank sealant. We're gonna to try to pour some stuff in the tank, slosh around, coat the inside, so if there's any kind of thin areas that are rusting through, because that is a really old gas tank, hopefully it cures it. So I gotta get going. I'll be back, continue where we left off with the old MM. Got the parts needed for this thing to get it hopefully running. Got a kit to line the inside of this tank with a sealer. It takes like four days to cure, and it's a, uh, quite a process of putting different solvents in and curatives and all kinds of stuff and then the sealer eventually. So leg arms went ahead and he just put some uh, very similar yellow paint on the bottom of the tank for now. When we do restore this thing all the way, we'll go through and strip all the paint down into a fresh coat. But for now, that'll keep some of the rust that was happening on the bottom. But while that's curing the paint, can't touch it because it's all over me. So we'll wait for that to cure and then I'll start the process of sealing the inside of that tank. I'm actually really stoked that that tank is fine. I was really uh, worried that we'd have literally little pinholes over the bottom of it and then you have to figure out what to do there because tanks are like a lot. So, but now I'm gonna go ahead and start on this. Got the new spark plug wire kit, got spark plugs. These ones are same kind, so that's great. We still carry that. So I'll pull the plugs out, put new plugs in, and then I'm gonna go ahead and make all new wires off the rotor and the cap here. He's marked them all, so we should be good there. And then I'll drop the oil, clean the air cleaner, and we'll get that much closer to starting this thing. But we won't be able to start it with that tank for at least four days, like I said, because it's got to cure four days before you can put gasoline in it. But that doesn't mean we can't just put a tank above here temporarily with a hose to fire it up, just, you know, so we can hear a purr, because these things sound so cool. So let's go over here and uh, mess with the wires. This is, I think, my second time ever doing this, making sparkly wires short. That phone is in my pocket and it will not shut up. Is that you texting me? No, I'm, I'm doing stuff. Anyways, um, so, but I'll, I uh, got a little, Instructions here and a little refresher course and we'll make some ends. So let's, uh, let's build some wires. Well, I just either pulled a really noob move or I just, uh, too strong for my own good, but I just sheared that spark plug, broke it right off, which means there's still a chunk inside there in the head. And uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get that out. Do you need to put heat on it? I'll get a torch.
Okay, we'll change the plans. I'm gonna pull all of the manifolds off, drain the coolant out of the system, get this baby ready to pull the head off. Dad found some old manuals that he's used in the past. He's actually pulled the head off this thing before. Let's just get this head off, figure out what's going on, just see if we can get that crazy spark plug housing threads out of that block. Fun, that's okay, we'll do it. Well, that wasn't the most graceful coolant drain, but I cut it out. The way they have that plug tucked up under there, not easy to drain out of that thing. Should've just taken the radiator hose off. Would've been easier. Usually I do that, but usually that makes a mess. So I was trying to do it the good way with pulling the plug, but whatever. Anyways, let's keep going. Think of that. I wasn't planning on touching that one. But you know how this goes. Take that one off, you look how bad that is. It smells like old gas. It means that side needs done too. So it's uh, not that hard to pull these off. Might as well just take them both off. Clean these heads up and then put them back on. I'm gonna go look up a gasket kit. We were gonna reuse some of these gaskets, but it's so old. I bet a gasket kit's not that bad. Get one ordered. This is turning into more than we were expecting. This was not the plan. The idea was to make a quick PTO tractor. I have other things I should be doing. That's okay, this is fun. This is actually a lot of fun. I've never been inside this tractor before. This is awesome. Well, there you have it. She is off. The cylinder walls look good. Dad said he put sleeves in this thing and rings quite a few years ago, but it probably hadn't had a lot of time on it since then. These are awesome engines. They sound so cool when they run. I can get a gasket kit for the whole entire engine for 190 bucks. Don't know when it'll be here. I got everything laid on the floor here. All the push rods, rocker arms, everything is in line from how I took it out of the engine. Heads, head gaskets. That's the one with the spark plug that's broke off inside. So now we gotta try to separate that. Then the next step is gonna be clean everything. Go through, clean the top of this block off, and then uh, go through and clean all the rockers and push rods up. Just try to get it looking nice. But uh, let's, uh, let's look at that spark plug a little closer. See if we can do it from this side. Got the problematic head on the bench now. I pressure washed them down real good with some steam cleaner. Blew off all the water. Got some gasket sealant from the previous repair job that's still on there. There is the easy out. Stuck into the side of that old remnants of the spark plug. At least now we can get it from this side. Um, I'll pull that easy out, take a look. We might be able to peel the spark plug and curl it over and kind of just try to break it up without hurting the threads. That's probably not a good idea. So you guys saw how much torque we were putting on it from the other side. We can't do anything from this side as far as trying to turn it out, but we can take a, a chisel and slightly tap on it. I don't know, I gotta get the heat over here. Leg arms is pretty busy, but he's the man to be helping with this too. He's pretty good at this kind of stuff. Don't tell him I said that. In fact, actually I'd clean this off for him if, uh, if he'd do that, but don't tell him I said that either. Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can get him. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Seriously? You made it come right out? It's turning now. Probably need to cut off that little tab off the spark plug so it can scratch the whole way up. Let me take care of that. Sting of things turning out now. Well, I guess we need to clean all this up anyways. How'd you do that? <laughs> I heated it one more time. From the inside or the outside? From the inside. But looking at it, it wouldn't have mattered, but I think if we would have tried it again after it finally cooled down, it probably would have come out. Because I just did one tap of the hammer on the breaker bar, and it went and it just turned. I was like, uh, okay. That's pretty. I mean, the heads are off, we'll clean them up. At least the threads aren't damaged. That's all that matters on the heads. Yeah, they're not, no. And then and we inspected the cylinders and they look good, so. Oh, that's amazing. That bugger, that was ridiculous, conquered you. You realize there's six injectors that you gotta pull out of that bud just like that. I mean spark plugs, my bad. Yeah. Well, now to clean everything up. 
and start the process of reassembling if uh, we decide to go that route. Yeah, I carefully cleaned up all the surfaces, the face of the head here, the valves, as well as all the places where gas is gonna go, exhaust, intake, valve cover. Pretty good, blew it all out, got all the water out of there from washing it. Um, Feels pretty good. Honestly, this head looks really good. I'm no expert with, uh, you know, looking at uh, cast iron heads here, but there's no signs of cracks or anything. Obviously, if you really want to get precise, you'd mic this thing and make sure it's perfectly machined flat and everything, but given the vintage of this tractor and uh, tolerances aren't nearly as critical, so obviously I'm going to try to do as good a job as I possibly can, but I think it's going to run pretty good when we're done here. It's, I'm just so jacked at that. A spark plug threads are gone because that was that'd be nervous. That'd be nervous. I was worried we might have to be tracking down ahead, which we technically have another tractor, but I would hate to salvage that one just to get this one going when that one could be rebuilt too. So, all right, let's go to head number two. Keep going. All right, now the fun part: clean up the top of these things. What are these called? It's not the block, right? Because you can remove them off the block. That's the block. These are the cylinder blocks? You guys know, leave a comment, tell me what that is. And by the way, I also made a mistake. I said my dad sleeved these things. You can't sleeve this, there's no sleeves. I think he might have honed them, definitely put new pistons and rings in it back in the day, but definitely didn't sleeve it, so yeah. I get it wrong sometimes, don't worry. I'm gonna clean this up. So first stage of process of putting the sealer in the tank was to add the degreaser to it. So I added a degreaser plus some hot water, following the instructions. I dumped a whole pan of some old mix and match nuts and washers and shook it vigorously, as you saw. So hopefully that breaks up being a little bit of crusty flakes that might be in there. And then it's been its time, so I'm gonna go dump the rest of that in that sink, get all the, butt, the bolts and nuts out of there. It's gonna be kind of fun, but they shouldn't be too hard getting out. Then I'll start the next process. I think I gotta dry it out, clean it, and then at the next thing, so we're making good progress. All right, well, it has been degreased, metal prepped, a bunch of metal nuts and all kinds of stuff that I shook and drug around, washed like four times, dried, now 100% dry in there. So I've got the sealant here, so I'm gonna open it up, pour it inside, put the cap on, I'm gonna slowly run the tank and make sure it runs all over in every crook and cranny of the inside of this thing. And then I just drain out the excess and uh, it's got to sit for four days before we can put gas in it. And then it should be good to go. But that's about the time parts are going to show up for the old Minneapolis Moline, so we'll be able to get that put together. So this will all work out just about right, theoretically. So I'm going to go ahead and dump the keel inside this thing and uh, get this thing cured. It'll be awesome. No more holes. Hopefully. Hopefully it lasts like 50 or more years. In fact, it's like 70 years old. That's amazing. Well, I think it's good. Now it's gotta sit. It's still draining into the trash can here. But uh, four days, I'll go put that up somewhere and uh, hopefully by then, we'll have this being put back together. And we can put this bad boy back on there, put some gas in it, and go drive this baby around. It'll be fun. Took all the rover hoses off the radiator and intake. I gotta take a couple off the hydraulic here too. They're just kinda, they're not leaking, but they're soft and they're probably gonna pop here not long. So. While we're at it, or this far end, we'll do that. I got an electronic ignition ordered, plus a new coil, and we went ahead and got wires that were made for this tractor as well. So that's on the list of things. I'm gonna drop the oil in it right now and uh, check the oil filter. It's built into the oil pan. I've never looked at one of those before, so I have no idea what I'm gonna get, get when I expect. It's just a screen or what, if this is clean, I don't know. So we'll pull that off, take a look at that too. And then, um, she's just gonna stay here for a bit until the parts show up. All the valve stuff up here, ready to go. So I wanna clean all that up and put her together, so uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're moving. Things are happening. Well, it's a Wix filter. I'll see if I can find some numbers on it. Hopefully we can get these, we'll find out, but there's definitely some rust on top of that. I guess how this thing works is it just sits in the oil pan and just absorbs particles that are just floating around. I don't know, there's no plumbing to it. There's no oil pressure that flows through it. There's no oil pump. I have to look in there closer. Maybe I don't understand how this works properly, but that's kind of confusing to me. Okay, I understand it now. There is two ports on this filter housing here, and one of them must be a pressure off the pump, pumps into this, Q 
cast cap here, which then has a little port which puts oil up through that bolt right there, which then fills the canister, the filter, full of oil, and then eventually it somehow squeezes out of there, or it's vice versa, I mean, it does the housing and then goes, either way, bottom line is it fills up then the housing, then there's another port on this cap, which then takes it up into the top of the engine where it supply oil to bearings and all that stuff. So it makes sense now. I was like, what in the world? Does it just sit here in the oil? How does this work? So that makes sense. I stuck my finger in the port on the bottom of the oil pan, a little bit of sludge in the bottom of the oil pan. To clean that properly means dropping the oil pan, which means like taking a bunch of this tractor apart. We're not at that point yet. I might flush with some solvent or something and see if I can get some of that out, but I just, we're not, this, we're, we're gonna be seeding next week. I can't, I can't be doing this right now. This is already way further than we were planning on going. So we'll get her going, put a new filter in. I'll try to flush that oil pan out as much as I can and then get her back together. But that's uh yeah, <laughs> not doing that. Because diesel's so cheap, it works as a great solvent. So I'm using this fire extinguisher here. It uses air pressure, fill up with water, soapy water and pressurize with air and then it's a cannon basically. Instead of water, I got diesel in it. We've done this in the past. So pressurize it up and then I spray diesel into the oil port, the drain plug, as well as a fill port and just spray around in the oil pan as much as I can get around. And that solvent mixes up all that junk that's sitting in the bottom of that pan and then flows out. And I'll just do a couple rinses, three or four, and then I just drain out overnight, dump some cheap oil in it that we don't use, let that flush the diesel out, let it sit again a little while longer, and then put the plug back in and put clean oil in it. But this should get a lot of that sludge that's sitting in that bottom of that pan out, because it's, it's lighter than the oil that's in there and it'll help break it up. So, working pretty good so far. The nasty black stuff that's coming out. Yummy. What? Can I clean the shop? Don't worry, old girl. Your parts are coming. They're coming. Just a little slow due to uh, the certain events going on right now. Shipping's a little slower than it normally is. But in a coming episode, guys, as soon as the parts come, we're going to tackle this thing, get the old uh, MMU put together. Fire it up, believe me, it'll all be on camera. You'll be able to hear it, and it sounds so cool. For those that have not heard old Minneapolis's run, they have a really unique sound, they're just a riot. I'm really excited to have this old tractor functioning again in a way that I know is, well, it's been fixed up. And then the next step, maybe, because we have a Wagner and who knows what else in the, in the forecast, which guys, we still have that Wagner. That's still gonna get worked on. That's actually ahead of the schedule on this one. <laughs> it's just, that one needs a lot more work than this one did as far as actually getting the drive because it needs tires. This one has tires that are holding air. Those aren't the original fronts, by the way. Those were put on. But besides the fact, it'll be sweet to have this thing going because I think we might turn to a mowing tractor on the farm this summer. So you'll get to see it on and off. It's just gonna be a fun tractor to have. Maybe you run through a parade. And then down the road, like I was saying, it'll get a nice makeover. Paint, dents fixed, new headlights, not LEDs. Don't worry, I'll put, I'll put incandescents back in there. And then, I don't know, maybe we'll track down the original rims for the front and put them on. But I kind of like those wide tires in the front too, so. All right, guys, thanks for watching. God bless. Take care. Wait for the next one. It's coming. Hope you guys have a tremendous week. Enjoy. Bye.